Hi, and welcome back to the Software Architecture blog series, where we speak about all things software architecture. I'm your host, Tengis. I'm a software architect with experience in solution, application, and enterprise architecture fields. I'm also a book author. My book is about engineering excellence, software architecture, leadership best practices, and so on in the enterprise world. Today, we have a special topic. We will discuss BDD or behavior-driven development with XUnit Gherkin Quick. And by end of this session, you will be able to answer the questions such as what is acceptance testing, what is ATDD, what is BDD, and finally, what is this framework XUnit Gherkin Quick that I mentioned. And of course, this episode is special because I will be demonstrating hands-on how to write the BDD tests using XUnit Gherkin Quick. So let's get started to this fun topic. Let's start with definitions first. What is acceptance test? Acceptance test is a test that checks whether the system meets some expectations or some specifications that the requirements set forth. So far so good. Now, what is ATDD? This term stands for the acceptance test driven development and it takes roots from such term as TDD, which stands for test driven development, while TDD refers to the unit tests that are written before the code. ATDD, of course, refers to acceptance tests that are written before the code. Sounds challenging? We will do it in this session. What is BDD or behavior driven development? This is yet another term that takes roots from the TDD or test driven development and this means to write behavior-driven tests before the implementation. So what's the difference between the acceptance test and the behavioral test? The difference is in the language that you use to write the tests. While acceptance tests can be written in any technical language, the BDD tests or behavioral tests must be written ideally in some shared language, some human readable language. And of course, such things as ubiquitous language also come into picture. And this is a great opportunity to introduce and practice the ubiquitous language on your project. If you are using BDD, you can as well write them in your ubiquitous language. And of course, the BDD test to work with a programming language, you need two elements first, the language that is more structured than just the regular human language. In other words, the language that can be interpreted by a computer. An example of such language is a Gherkin. This is very popular language for writing BDD tests. And finally, what is XUnit Gherkin Quick? Well, as the name suggests, this is a framework that combines the power of XUnit and Gherkin, which connects the two pieces together and allows you to execute your code, which must correspond to the Gherkin statements. And we will see exactly how to do this in the Visual Studio. And of course, a little note about technology constraints. XUnit Gherkin Quick is a framework for the .NET and .NET Core technologies, but the primary point is that the framework should allow you to write your expectations using Gherkin language and then write the BDD test in your preferred programming language. Traditionally, I will be putting the link to the XUnit Gherkin framework in the description of this video. And now it's a demo time. All right, so we are now looking at my screen. This is a Visual Studio, and I will be writing a BDD test in Visual Studio. First test and then the implementation. First steps are, of course, to create a new XUnit test project and then add the reference to the XUnit Gherkin Quick Framework. That framework will bring with itself references to the XUnit as well as the Gherkin frameworks if you don't already have them in your project. So let's do that and take it from there. That's it. I already have the new XUnit test project and all the necessary package references as well. Now it is time to create the implementation project. For this simple presentation purposes, I will be implementing a calculator, which is nothing other than just a class which is able to add or multiply numbers, and that is it. In order to do that, of course, in the BDD process, first step is to write some acceptance tests in the Gherkin language, and I will do that right now. You see, as simple as that, as long as you know those simple structures upon which this language relies, you can always write the Gherkin text as simple as I did right now. And of course, these constructs are 
given, when, then, and, but, features, and scenario, and other keywords which come with the language definition. So I recommend that you check out the language reference for Gherkin if you want to learn more. For this example, this feature file does the job. With the XUnit Gherkin Quick Framework, you need to opt into the discovery and execution of the BDD tests that are not yet implemented. So let's do that right now. For this, we need to derive from the base missing feature class. And after that, we will start seeing not implemented tests in the test explorer. This empty class will do the trick. The name discover not implemented scenarios is up to you. In this case, I named it this way because this is how I want the discovered not implemented tests to be grouped. Of course, we need to mark the feature class for the output into the final directory. Otherwise, the test executor will not even see this feature class. We do this by simply marking it copy to output directory, copy if newer, or copy always as you want. And as you can see, in this case, we have the results of the execution on the left side. The test explorer is telling us that there are two tests, add numbers and multiply numbers, and both of them are not yet implemented. Of course, we need to write some C -sharp code, which corresponds to these tabs in the feature file Gherkin. But what do we invoke from those tab methods, which I will tie to these tab texts? Of course, we need to invoke some kind of implementation, which is not yet ready. So let's create some dummy implementation class, which we are not going to implement until the tests fail. And when the tests fail, then we go back and start implementing. And then we see how tests start passing. And that is the exact process of the BDD or behavior driven development. When first you write the behavioral tests, they fail, and then you write the implementation. So follow me in this process and we will have a lot of fun. So suppose this is the class that we are going to test, but what would happen in a real world? You might not be testing a simple construct as a class, but you might be testing more complex components. For instance, you might be making calls to the API and that API might not yet be implemented and you will see the test failing. In other cases, what I have done a lot of times is I would instantiate not a calculator class, the simple case, but I would instantiate something like a view model of the MVVM application and I would invoke methods on that view model which are not yet implemented and I would see the test failing and then I would implement them to have the test passing. So that is in the real world and of course in this case we are just demonstrating the usage of the framework and the BDD and the acceptance tests so we don't have to get so complex with this demo. And the class that I just created will be a backend for the calculator specs.feature text file. And this is where we will write the C -sharp code for the test. And we will tie this code with the feature file Gherkin text. But before we do that, let's see how the test output changes from the previous outcomes. As you can see, in this case, the test explorer does not complain anymore that these scenarios are not implemented because it found our feature class, which ties with the feature file, and it recognized that you started implementing. But there are some steps which are not yet implemented under the calculator steps CS file or the class file, and this is what it is complaining in this case. Now, if I run the test again, you will see that now it complains about the second step because the first step has a matching method in this case already. However, there are a couple of things that we need to fix here. First, the number two, we don't want this to be hard coded like this because if somebody writes in the future another scenario in that feature file which has another number in it instead of the two, we still want this method to match with the ones that we wrote. And in fact, we already have another mention of the same text, but with different number in it. For instance, this one, it says given I have four as the first number instead of a two as the previous one does. And those both I want to match with the same backend code. And so I need to extract that into a placeholder. Let's do that right now. All right, so this trick relies on the c -sharp's regex grouping construct and it extracts the value from this placeholder right here, which says that we expect a set of digits one or more, and all those must be extracted into the first number integer argument. So this will still match the first method and it will still complain about the second one. 
And indeed, that is the case. Now, what we have to do is just continue implementing step by step each step methods in this backend class, the calculator specs CS file. And we will see that the test starts passing because we are not yet calling any implementation code. And of course, writing such tests doesn't make any sense in real world, but just to demonstrate that these step methods now match all the Gherkin step texts, let's just run the test once again. And indeed, the first step passed, and of course, the second one does not pass because we didn't yet implement it. So let's come back to the first scenario and start implementing the test before implementing the calculator actual class. Let's do that by adding calls into the calculator's methods which are not yet implemented and have the test fail. Let's do that right now. All right, so what did we do? We implemented the tests and we started calling into the newly stopped or not implemented methods into the calculator class. Now let's see what the test does. Of course, it will fail because it calls into the methods and they throw the not implemented exception. Let's check it out. All right, now we have the failing BDD test and now it's time to make it pass. What do we do? We just implement these methods instead of throwing not implemented exceptions. We implement the actual expected behavior. Let's do that. All right, now we have the behavior implemented. Notice that the test on the left is still in the failing state. Now is the moment of the truth. We run it again. It should pass. And that proves that we have followed the BDD process properly. And as you can see now, the BDD test has passed. It was failing before we just added the implementation. We didn't change anything in the code test side. So this is a proper BDD test process. Let's run all the tests now and see that the second one fails. And we need to make it pass again using the same process. And the, for the second, as you can see, the first and second steps already match the backend because of the tricks that I mentioned earlier. I extracted the numbers into the placeholders and now we only need to implement this one step by which they differ and then everything else should just work just fine. So this is a quick trick. Let's do this. All right, we had the failing test. I did the implementation for the only steps that was the difference between the first and the second scenario texts. Now I will run the second test, it should pass again because it's the only difference. And now the second test passed as well. Let's run both tests and see the results. Great, we have just implemented two BDD tests using the Gherkin language, which in this case specified one feature with two scenarios with its backend code, which tied the C sharp methods with the feature scenario step texts. And finally, we had the test failing because we didn't yet have the implementation. And finally, we added the implementation and had the tests passing. That's exactly what I wanted to demonstrate. It's as simple as that. That was it for the hands-on demo for today. This was a fun exercise to write some code. I don't usually do that at work nowadays, but I do it for myself for fun. So I hope you had fun as well. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please click a thumbs up button so that others can also find this video. Also consider subscribing if you want to hear notifications about my future videos, which happens once a week approximately. Make sure to post your questions, suggestions and notes in the comments section under this or other videos respectively. Check out my blog and my website where I have a lot of learning material about BDD and other interesting engineering and software architecture topics. And finally, have a look at my book, which is about engineering excellence, software architecture, leadership best practices, and is primarily based on domain-driven design, software architecture, and extreme programming techniques. This was Tengiz, your host for the Software Architecture Vlog series. Thanks. Bye-bye.